Are you finally ready for this? Here it goes. Mindset. One of the skills almost all successful people have acquired is the ability of reading people. By the end of this video series, you'll acquire the foundation for a very easy and powerful framework. Then, once you know your own behavior type, you recognize others and you're able to adjust your way of speaking, writing, thinking, and ultimately, your own behavioral pattern to increase the likelihood for a more effective and pleasant communication. Not only all of that, but besides this, also find the weaknesses and flaws in your own character. From there, you can improve your own weak parts and become a better version of yourself. I will elaborate on how I use this system to upgrade the relationships, workflow and myself simultaneously. Trust me, this is one of those things in life that once you see it, you will not be able to unsee it. Each video will explore one of the four personality types with plenty of examples in contemporary media like The Avengers, Suits, The Blacklist, Game of Thrones, Mission Impossible, Harry Potter and many many more. There will be plenty of male and female characters provided. A great quote comes to mind. Being able to switch up your vocabulary depending on who you're speaking to is a life skill a lot of people lack. Through this simplistic and surface level approach, you'll learn to do exactly that at the end of this four part series. This will be the longest video of all, but it will provide you the necessary framework. So before we start with the red personality, let's quickly explore what the four types are, what the history is behind the system, and even that little feeling of discomfort you have wondering, Chayan, isn't it wrong to categorize people? So if you're ready, sit back and try observing the commonalities of the red behavior types. And in due time, I am sure you will spot them with ease in your own life. Ever since ancient times, people have categorized one another. Even though psychology didn't really exist before Freud and Jung, people have categorized other people in accordance with one system or another ever since ancient Greece. It was then that humoral pathology was developed by Hippocrates. Humoral pathology is based on the idea that our bodies have four important fluids, according to which there are four personality types. Sanguine, choleric, phlegmatic, and melancholic. The Aztecs developed quite a similar system as well, categorizing people in accordance with their relationship with the four elements. These are fiery, airy, watery, and earthy. In the 20th century, however, a guy by the name of Walter Marston developed a modern version of these categorizations called the DISC model. In short, D stands for dominance, I for inspiration, S for steadiness, and C for compliance. Marston used the word compliance, however, Thomas, the author of Surrounded by Idiots, branded this as analytical ability. The DISC profile is used throughout the world, it is especially used a lot in the corporate world to screen new potential hires. The dominance trait in any given individual relates to how he approaches problems and deals with challenges. It is all about acting. For these types, life is not worth living unless they are doing. This is the red person, which we will extensively cover in this video. That's not the job. The job is fine. Just find my money, Nick. Never ever. Your life! Nick! Wait, no, something's wrong. Come on, Mino, you can do it! Inspiration refers to a person who likes to influence others. 
In simple terms, you could say that dominance is about acting and inspiration is about interacting. For these people, life is not worth living unless they are talking. This is the yellow person. What the hell do you know about being a bastard? All dwarves are bastards in their father's eyes. Sometimes possession is an abstract concept. How would you like to die, Tyrion, son? In my own bed, at the age of 80, with a belly full of wine and a girl's mouth around my cock? <laughs> <laughs> Priority is to get the Iron Man weapon turned over to the people of the United States of America. Well, you can forget it. I am Iron Man. The suit and I are one. To turn over the Iron Man suit would be to turn over myself, which is tantamount to indentured servitude or prostitution, depending on what state you're in. Can't have it. Uh, look, I I'm no uh, expert. In prostitution, of course not. You're a senator. Come on! <laughs> Ain't no thing like me. Me. This one here is our booty. You want to get to him, you go through us. The degree of steadiness or stability is measured primarily by how receptive an individual is to change. Stability is all about connection. For these types, life is not worth living unless there is relaxation. This is the green person. But there's some good in this world, Mr. Ford. And it's worth fighting for. I want to be free. Go on. I don't know how to ride a dragon. Nobody does until they ride a dragon. What if he doesn't want me to? Come on, there are men laying down their lives. I got no right to do any less than them. That's what you don't understand. This isn't about me. Right. And finally, we have the compliance type, which the author replaced with analytical ability. It shows how willing someone is to follow rules and regulation. Quality is of utmost importance. For these types, life is not worth living if not thinking. Analytical people cannot accept that things may go wrong or happen at random. Rose at the elevators ahead of schedule. Go. Analytical ability is all about organization. And this is the blue person. My chief analyst, William Brandt. That could be Kurt Hendricks, 190 IQ. He served in Swedish Special Forces, professor of physics. Marston's disk system has been developed further and have now, for mnemonic reasons, been color coded, which will make it infinitely easier for you to remember. I am impressed. Your condescension, as always, is much appreciated, Arthur. Thank you. Thomas, in Surrounded by Idiots, states that about 80% are a mix of colors and 5% have one color that dominates their behavior. The others are dominated by three colors. And for those wondering, I've done many of these tests and with every single one of them, I came out as a red with a slight tint of yellow. When my close friend read the book, they said, God damn it, Cheyenne, that book explains you to the T. Since we learned each other's style of communication now, we got a lot closer. Friends, I am really curious to which one you are, so if you've ever taken these tests, let me know in the comment section below. Before we explore the rat personality, let's have a look at the team surrounding Harry Potter. Harry is the leader. Ron is charming and outspoken. Sorry. Can't be any worse than old Toadface. Thanks, Ron. I'm here for you, mate. Neville is loyal and constant, and Hermione is organized and well read. See this? It's a letter Dumbledore wrote to Grindelwald. Look at the signature. These characters are very different, yet, the characters all learn from and complement each other. In the Harry Potter movies, the team created by Harry, Ron, Neville, and Hermione function as a well-balanced team. All are very different from one another, but together they come up with solutions that none of them would be able to plan or enact on their own. The same goes for the Avengers, which we'll cover bit by bit throughout these videos. Now, as we're about to explore the first personality type, 
even though we are covering the disk system, the Big Five personality test is by far the most scientifically validated and reliable psychological model to measure personality. But I'll get to that at the end of the video. Take a look at this for a second. You have profiles that are task oriented and those that are more relation oriented. At the same time, those that are extroverted and introverted. As we can see here, rats are leaning towards extroversion and are more task and goal oriented. They want to get the job done as fast as possible. You might call a red person bold, ambitious, driven, but also potentially hot tempered, rash or dominant. You quickly notice a red person because they don't make the slightest effort to conceal who they are. A red person is a dynamic and driven individual. They strive forward, always pushing themselves harder. Their belief in their own ability is unsurpassed. They carry inside them the firm belief that they can achieve anything if they just work hard enough. They make quick decisions and are often comfortable taking the lead and taking risks. A common perception is that rats are natural leaders. These are people who willingly take command. They are so driven that they will get through despite any obstacles in their path. They don't always think things through like blues, they just act. What are you gonna do? I don't know what I'm gonna do, but whatever it is, I'm gonna do it right now. Harvey, calm down. I'm not gonna calm down. But this quick rushing into things can be their downfall, and they need a counter force that put things into perspective. Look at this scene here. Tom, I need to shoot. Even at 162, you're pushing minimum height for a jump. Shoot opens any lower than that. Park's two blocks away. I'm not saying I have a better idea, but there's a point where bold now becomes you know, stupid. We can get that gear here. I just delivered it myself. We contact Musgrave, have the IMF trace a tag, order a raid, get the rabbit's foot back, grab Davian. Now, if I get out with Julia, we win. Their disposition is ideal in competitive situations. So it's not unusual for a CEO or a president to have loads of rats in their behavior. In the Maze Runner, the protagonist is a typical rat person. We could trust each other. Yeah, we're all on the same team here. Are we? Soon after this, Thomas finds out that they're being used, and if there is one thing Red Styles hate, it is being taken advantage of. I only want what's best for you. Yeah, let me guess. Wicked is good. You're not getting through that door, Thomas. We got it. I knew we'd get it. <laughs> we got it. We're gonna nail it. Something is always happening in the lives of red people. They just cannot sit still. Idle time is wasted time. What are you waiting for? Quick is synonymous with good for rats. Life is short, so better get going immediately. Do you recognize the type? Always on the go. Some female red personality types are Jessica Pearson in Suits. I knew it was 5149. But I didn't think you would lord your 2% over me like a hammer. You went behind my back. I am in charge on this side of the ocean. Because I allow it to be that way. And there it is again. 5149. Cersei Lannister in Game of Thrones. I told you no one walks away from me. Are you going to order him to kill me? Tears aren't a woman's only weapon. The best ones between your legs. Look at my face. It's the last thing you'll see before you die. So we fight and die, or we submit and die. I know my choice. Daenerys Targaryen in Game of Thrones. The next time you raise a hand to me will be the last time you have hands. And I swear to you, that those who would harm you will die screaming. When my dragons are grown, we will take back what was stolen from me. 
and destroy those who have wronged me. We will lay waste to armies and burn cities to the ground. Turn us away, and we will burn you first. Dervi Jerry City Bilos Daor. Gemele Meli City Bilos. Lomiri Ziri. Mesmalgon Bestila. Tolvis Jevis. Elizabeth King and the Blacklist. You okay? Who the hell are you? FBI. I didn't come here to audition. Wait, the job. It's yours. I don't want the job. Call somebody who does. How did you get my phone? What if I paid you double? You're dead. No, Bill. For the first time, I'm feeling pretty alive. So if you want to come for me, you better come ready for a fight. Because you know what the four of you against me in the woods is going to be? Practice. Susan Hargrave from Blacklist. I regret what happened to Elizabeth Keene, but her kidnapping was simply a business decision. You, of all people, should recognize that. We all do what we have to in order to survive. And Samantha Wheeler from Suits. She is a primarily red person. In here. Bullshit. You're lucky we're in here. We go to court and I will clean your clock. And I'm not going to lose what's mine because Alex used that time to win. I would have thought, given your time at Rand Caldor, you would have learned better than to tangle with me. Which means it was a smart move because it didn't break the law, but it was also dumb because it wasn't hard to figure out who it was. You said it yourself. You didn't want to tangle with me. And if you think I can't find something in your life where you did cross the line, well, then you haven't been paying attention. Some red mill personality types are Harvey Specter in Suits. You hear that? He's not Mike Ross's attorney anymore, I am. So let me the hell in. I'm not going to lose to you. He cut a deal to keep us from going to prison. And you know it. You know, I don't give a shit what he thought when he made that he deal. He was going to be found innocent. I'm the managing partner of this firm. We can change that right now because I was here before you and I'm going to be here long after you're gone. Are you threatening me? I'm not going anywhere, neither is Samantha. Because you're the past and she's the future. Not here, she's not. Now get the fuck out of my office. Ethan Hunt in Mission Impossible. Now. I've done this business with the help of a voice in my head. I'm here to do business. Tell the voice to flip a coin. You think this is a coincidence that someone just happened upon this? Lane had its sent to her. Don't you see? This, sir. This is the trap. We are being directed. You've lost this one. What's done is done. No, sir. I'm sorry, sir, but you left me no choice. Ethan, where are you? I'm in a helicopter going after Walker. Oh, did you find the other bomb? We're, we're still looking, but... Finding the bomb is not going to matter unless we have the detonator. I, I know, I know. I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh, if he's in another helicopter, how are you going to get it? I'll figure it out. The Hulk and the Avengers. Frank Underwood and House of Cards. Horton's dog. Oh. It's not going to make it. Go see if they're home. There are two kinds of pain. Sort of pain that makes you strong, or useless pain. Sort of pain that's only suffering. I have no patience for useless things. <laughs> Moments like this require someone who will act. CWI is important, yes. But it doesn't come close to what we're trying to accomplish. You must see that. All I care about is a win, Frank. I realize that I sometimes think out of the box, but the last time I did, we signed an education bill. Okay. Thank you, sir. There's no better way to overpower a trickle of doubt than with a flood of naked truth. And of course, James Bond. Because of your ego, well, that same ego can't take it. Well, then you're an idiot. I'm sorry? I said you're a bloody idiot. Look in my eyes. I can beat this man, you know that. In the Avengers, the Hulk is a great representation of this red behavior type. Dominant, brute force, and his secret is that he is always angry. This is the red style personality superpower too. Reds don't wait for permission. They act. They aren't concerned with consensus or teamwork. They are concerned with achieving their objectives. You still have a bit of a security problem, Headmaster. In 
the Avengers, Loki calls Hulk a mindless beast that makes play, he's a man. But Banner describes it as always having a raw nerve. His anger and his power to act on it keeps him from paying attention to details and plans when he is the other guy. The rats are the ones you turn to in an emergency. Hulk, and let me be clear, not Banner, but Hulk is good in crisis. He is not afraid of confrontation or danger. Loki says, I have, I have an, an army. army. Iron Man says, we, we have, have the Hulk. Hulk. This encourages the idea that one rat style can accomplish more than a number of other people combined. Few things annoy rats more than sluggishness. They detest inactivity. Things must happen. Add to this a sense of constant urgency and a great deal will get done. Since they want things done fast, they don't beat around the bush. Rats therefore have no problem whatsoever with being blocked. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. In here. Bullshit. You're lucky we're in here. We go to court and I will clean your clock. He's a visionary like me. Visionaries. Psychiatric wards are full of them. Get out of my sight. If you start to lose, you may not fight the right way. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But well, then you better look over your shoulder every day for the rest of your natural born life. What did you say? You heard me. Listen to me, you son of a bitch. You pulled out a gun and threatened to shoot my guy, and I don't give a shit if you didn't mean to shoot it because it went off. And I ever so much as hear your name again, I will find you and I will break every bone in your body. In the blacklist, Harold Cooper is the leader of the notorious task force that works with Raymond Reddington, one of the most wanted criminals on the FBI list. Harold is just like Raymond, a red personality, although Raymond Reddington also has a tint of yellow. Listen to all the stories he tells. In the video of frame control, you will see how these two try to dominate each other in many instances. For now, see how blunt and straight to the point Harold is to Raymond. You don't want to dwell on the past. And dwell on this. The loss of her badge was a stain on Elizabeth's name and reputation, which you are ultimately responsible for. Your presence in her life has turned it into what it is today. You bought her nothing but pain, grief, and regret, which you seem utterly oblivious to and surprisingly powerless to rectify. Good talk, Harold. This bluntness is typical in red people. As said, they do not like beating around the bush because that would be wasting time. If you need someone with extra energy, you may want to invite a rat into the team or group project. They fight tirelessly along when others have already given up. They know there's always a way, always a deal. I told you, the deal on the mine is closed. There's always another deal. Rats are both groundbreaking and strong-willed, result-oriented and decisive. For rats, it is not sufficient to do things like everyone else does. He's going to take the prime minister. Yes, he is. The question is how. Well, we have to warn the British government. Yeah, MI6. No, no, Fran. Put down the phone. People feel irritated or intimidated by them because they are such powerful personalities. Yeah, no, you don't know him. If he wants something to happen, there is no preventing it. It is their intense, competitive behavior that often upsets other people because they think it's all about dominating and suppressing others. Nothing could be further from the truth. Their intentions were almost never malicious. So what is it? Rats just want to win. They seek efficiency. So you guys think I'm gonna run scared at the prospect of losing a little money? This is a $50,000 bond. You see, I'm not in this business for the money. Money's just about keeping score. I'm in this business to win. When you looked into me, you found out that whatever I do, I do it to win and that's all I ever did for you. A couple of years back, I wasn't looking for a relationship and was just looking for fun. What do you do in those times? You go to Tinder. As a predominant red personality, I wanted speed and efficiency in the process. I found a remarkable and ethical way of achieving my goals on that front. You know what? I'll elaborate on that for the VIP patrons. What I'm driving home is, the hallmark of red people is nothing is fast enough for them. They want to utilize their time to the max. Just get going and going and going. They aren't relation-oriented, 
but goal-oriented. Even with things as sex, they seem to be able to discern physical needs and goals from emotional connection. It also looks like they have unlimited energy. The reason for this is, and I will get you clear on this on the mindset videos in the future as well, is their vision propels them forward. Perhaps you've heard of the pleasure principle. In the Freudian psychoanalysis, the pleasure principle is the instinctive seeking of pleasure and avoiding of pain to satisfy biological and psychological needs. What you want to instill in yourself, regardless of which personality types or better said, temperaments you have, is to create a vision that pulls you forward. But at the same time, you have something that chases your ass. So, you have something pleasurable on one side, your vision, positive emotion, and something painful on the other side. Perhaps the mistakes you made in your life, or traumatic and painful moments of your life, negative emotions. I've noticed that rats who find out that they can channel their energy into their goals will get a tremendous amount of stuff done. And at the same time, they get out of their own way. Speaking of creating a vision for yourself. Friends, quick message. I want to thank every single one of you for your like and comment. It is those three little actions that you took that made this channel grow so rapidly. And I am grateful for that. Another piece of great news. I finally have the long awaited productivity planner in my hands. I will cover in details extensively how I use this planner, which is one of the most important things in my morning routine and how it makes me so incredibly productive. And for the people who are new here, the goal of this channel is to give you the tools and strategies that you can implement in your life so you can achieve your desired goals and dreams. More importantly, so you can maximize your potential. If that resonates with you, consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks again. Rats are very quick thinkers and they move on long before anyone else. The ability to manage difficult situations and challenges is the defining attribute of rat behavior. Ambition, which is intrinsic to rats, shouldn't be confused with the lust of power. He will. Man who fights for gold can't afford to lose to a girl. Your reign is over. My reign has just begun. Rats have no problem taking positions of power since they are fearless, but for a rat, power is not an end in itself. It does, however, come in handy for those who like to make their own decision and avoid having to wait for others. A rat doesn't try to stick to his or her original point of view when they realize that a better solution exists. What? We can't do that! We've got to plan, we've got to figure it out! Hermione, when have any of our plans ever actually worked? We plan, we get there, all hell breaks loose. They are quick thinkers and have no problem shifting the ground at short notice. One of the advantages of this is they don't reject other people's ideas if they have none themselves. For them, it is worth looking rightfully so, into anything that can propel development forward. No, we need something clear, something clean, something that sticks in your head. Ability. Disorganized labor. It's a disorganized labor. Sometimes decisions can come a little bit too quickly, but the will to constantly change creates a strong dynamism and flexibility. Naturally, there are also downsides. Rats get bored with the status quo quickly, and so they change it. The people around them have no idea what will happen next. Their anger is also imminent. I may not look like it, but at one point in my life, I was a walking volcano ready to erupt at any moment. I had to find tools and do deep inner work facing my dark side to become the calm and controlled person I am today. Now I control the anger and not the other way around. This kind of emotional mastery is another life skill I hope you'll acquire through these videos. Using pain and anger as a source of fuel for your endeavors. Another downfall of rats is they will trample on people's toes. Not always deliberately. Nova Gavi! Axios and us! Mentios and us! 
Kiloni pilos lue vale tolvio sinetas. Ininini o trikatas. Urne lue tolde prijatas. Salo! Drakaris. Rats are quick and more than happy to take command if needed. They make things happen. However, when they get going, they become control freaks and can be hopeless to deal yeah, with. And therefore, they repeatedly trample on people's toes. I need Look, it. keeping it from me isn't a mistake, it's a decision. I wanted to protect you. If I had told you the truth... You, you don't keep things from me! You keep things from me all the time! That's because I'm your boss! Well, maybe you shouldn't be my boss anymore. Damn it, this was your responsibility! You were meant to check Fisher's background thoroughly! We are not prepared for this type of violence! Jessica threatened me! I don't, I don't care! Anyone comes at you with any threat at all, you come to me. I don't give a shit if it's the Queen of England. You come to me, you tell me, you tell me everything! That's what goddamn loyalty is! With rats, you have to be sincere, direct, and argumentative. Rats hate beating around the bush and are less receptive if you use euphemisms. However, they will use any weakness in your argument against you, so stay strong and firm. Also, they don't care about breaking rules when quicker solutions are there. Samantha Wheeler, just like Harvey and Jessica, is a strong and decisive rat personality. And here is what she has to say about rules. I'm not saying breaking the rules is a bad thing. I'm saying you just need to know which ones to break. If you're gonna help me the next couple of days, you should know how I work. This rule breaking tendency is another hallmark of rats and is quite the opposite of the rule beating, detail oriented blues. With rats, it is obvious that you say what you think. Jessica Pearson is a rat personality. She is fierce, strong willed, dominant, and truly groundbreaking. Here's the situation a problem has occurred in their firm, and they are thinking about hiring this woman. So, how can this woman win Jessica's respect here? I'm a straight shooter, Jessica. Easy to say, harder to prove. All right, how about this? Um, you are an elegant woman, but there is no getting around it. That dress does not belong in this office. <laughs> I like you. As you saw, rats will respect you when you push a little back. They are used to people bending to their will. Hide her on the spot. The woman insults you, all of a sudden you're in bed with her? Maybe I should tell you how much I hate those shoes. So, to answer the question, don't beat around the bush, pay a little respect so their ego isn't trampled. You are an elegant woman. And then, deliver your message straight on. But there is no getting around it. That dress does not belong in this office. Here is another example. That's why I need you to leave. It's not your decision to make, Ethan. I am a field agent. I know the risks. More than that, I am your friend. No matter what I tell the polygraph every week. Now you called me because you needed my help and you still do. So I am staying. And that is all we are gonna say about that. Okay. Since rats have no problem with conflict, the worst thing you can do once you get into conflict with a rat is to back off and let them walk all over you. Friends, if a rat is permitted to walk all over you, you lose something very important in their eyes. Respect. If they don't respect you, they will eat you alive. Here is a great example on how to deal with rat people seen in suits between two predominantly rat behavior types. See how Harvey deals with the situation after Tony Giannopoulos comes down on him. But can you understand why I want him crushed? Because you want people like Jonathan Sidwell to know what happens when they try to leave. Ah, finally my lawyer shows up. You see it how you want to see it. But if you can't figure out a way to make Jonathan stay, you'll be the one who's gone. Tony, I'm gonna fix this, but I'm not like the other lawyers you've burned through. So the next time you go stomping around like a four-year-old throwing tantrums with me, I'll be the one getting rid of you. It's important that you never let them get their way by barking off the heads of other people. And just remember that bickering and brawling are techniques that have been working oh, for shit. rats for many Go years. For the advantage for rats is that they get everything done in this way. The disadvantage is everyone feels controlled. 
This was one of my weak points I had to tackle as well. I was too domineering on every front of my life. If there was a better way, I would let you know in a very blunt way. Because that's how I wanted people to treat me as well. Just give it to me straight. See, I hate inefficiency and back then I could not tolerate it. It was either my way or the highway. Friends, this is not a quality that will lead you far since we live in a world where teamwork is necessary for great endeavors. I still have many, many, many flaws in my character, but fortunately throughout the years I have overcome this part of myself. I'm at ease letting people do their thing on their own pace. When they do ask for help, I will tell them, but whether they listen or not, that's on them. It is their journey, not mine. A consequence of this shift is that people don't feel controlled. But what happens when people do feel controlled? A lot of things, but the two greatest ones are You'll lose friends and you'll be cut off from valuable information because people simply will dislike you. And rats, since they're not relation oriented, hate being cut off information. I hate being kept in the dark. Waiting. Speculating. Useless. So what else annoys rat personalities? They hate unchallenging and mundane tasks more than they hate death itself. Pro bono. Anything but that. Harvey, pro bono cases are how we as a firm show that we care about more than just ourselves. I'm not saying we shouldn't do them. I'm saying I shouldn't do it. So, if you want them on your team, give them something difficult to do and also a team to command. If you've ever sat in a car and someone has been getting worked up because you could have passed that guy or switched that lane and that you're driving inefficiently, you probably had a red behavior type in your car. They absolutely despise sluggishness and slowness. Again, for reds, quick is synonymous with good. Now that you know how people who are predominantly red behave, the question is how can you adapt to that? In a red's world, everything simply takes way too long. For them, thought and action are one. It has to be done quickly. So adopt to a red stamp. Hurry up, speed up, speak and act more quickly. Look at the clock often because that is what a red does. If you can conclude a meeting in half the time, you do it. Also, cut the small talk. It's vital that you are clear and straightforward. Determine the most essential points of your message and start there. But here's a heads up. If a red senses that you're uncertain, you'll be grilled on the facts. For a red, Written material should be concise and above all, well laid out. Now if you're a red, I advise you to learn to stop being to the point with people all of the time. No more short text with just a question or a simple answer. As unnatural as it may feel, be more elaborative in your texting and talking. Explain your thought process so people can follow. Another thing when you deal with rats, if you have an opinion, out with it. Deliver your opinion without blinking. Reds judge you on how driven you are. You should listen to them, but you must have an opinion of your own. Otherwise, you'll be perceived as weak. And that is not a quality that will win you any points. A red won't meet other reds every day, so when he actually does, he is pleasantly surprised. You should also confront reds directly, or else they'll walk all over you as shown before. Here's a scene in which Kate directly tells Raymond Reddington as it is. Everything will be fine, Raymond. Oh, for God's sake, Tempe, spare me the mystical reassurance. Everything is not fine. Where the hell was the perimeter defense of that damn church? You should have deployed four teams, five teams. Stop it, Raymond. This has little to do with Denbe and nothing to do with that poor girl in there. She's been telling you for months that you're a danger to her baby. This is on you, Raymond, nobody else. Another important thing when dealing with rats is, you have to show that you are willing to work hard. Also be willing to take initiative. Offer suggestions that the rat didn't ask for. As usual, get ready for a fight, but they will like your drive. This brings us to the next question, how to behave when you meet a rat. Essentially, rats dislike getting into details. It is boring and takes time. A rat needs someone who can get him to pause and realize that not everyone 
has grasped the situation as quickly as they have. Give examples of instances when time was lost of being too hasty. Point out the risks involved in hurrying too much and explain that others can't keep up. Since many rats are less relationally focused, they are frequently criticized for insisting that all relationships must take place on their terms, even in their private life. I've had this thrown in my face practically with every single friend of mine. Cheyenne, why do we always have to adjust to your schedule? Cheyenne, why does every conversation go according to your topics? Believe it or not, but this book, surrounded by idiots, had a tremendous impact on me. It revealed parts of myself that were unbeknownst to me. My weak points, pitfalls, domineering tendencies. And from here, I started to explore my shadow bit by bit. And that's the beauty of this disc tool. I see it as a service level introduction to observing your own behavior and finding out your own temperament. As Carl Jung said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Once you become aware of something, then you can change certain behavioral patterns. See, I had, you won't say now, zero blue characteristics. I didn't like or appreciate details, I just wanted to get things done, period. But how did I develop those valuable blue traits? I'll explain that story and process in the blue video. As a rat, naturally, I couldn't understand that others were avoiding me because they would rather avoid conflict. And they didn't understand that I wasn't trying to be dominating, I just wanted to use my time as efficiently as possible. That meant little small talk and get down to business. What changed in your life? Where are you heading? What's your progression? Etc. That's what I'm interested in, not random small talk. But this also meant in the long run that I was excluded from important information. And that is, as said before, another thing that rats absolutely despise. Rats naturally get angry and when they do, you should confront their behavior immediately. Don't allow any exceptions, just say loudly and clearly that you won't tolerate coarse remarks, nastiness and an uncalled for tantrum. If you are a rat, find ways to deal with it. How I do it, I simply channel my anger into my goals. Also, when rats get angry, demand adult behavior and if they lose their temper, just leave the room. Observe how Donna handles Harvey here. Not the fifth time and it's not the last time. I thought you were trying to help my relationship, not shit on it. Okay, you want to yell at me? Fine, because I know you're not mad at me. I got us some coffee. Donna, what the hell? This isn't everything. What do you mean this isn't everything? And all this shit is nothing. Harvey, these boxes are... Look. Where are the things that we can attack procedurally? They're over there. Then why haven't you gone through them? Because that's not what I do. Then what in God's name are you doing in here? I'm supporting you, Harvey, and right now I'm gonna do that by giving you some space. Oh, and the growth-oriented Patreon members will get exclusive content covering what a red does when he gets stressed and feels pressured, how you can help reds manage their stress, and the kicker, how to give feedback to a red. It will pop up in your patron-only feed in the upcoming days. That was it for the rat personality type. Now, coming back to your burning question of isn't it bad to categorize people like this? No, it's not. In fact, if it leads to more awareness and better and effective communication, I would argue it is a good thing. Thomas, the author of Surrounded by Idiots, writes, some people are opposed to the idea of sorting people into different behavior types. Maybe you believe that you shouldn't categorize people in that way. That is wrong to pigeonhole people. The fact remains that we are different. Pointing that out can be something positive if you do it the right way. Improperly used, every tool can be harmful. It is more about the person using it than the tool itself. And that reminds me of a saying. Give a scalpel to a psychopath and he will take lives. Give that same scalpel to a doctor and he will save life. The scalpel, the tool, is only an extension of the person who uses it. It is not bad or improper on its own. The same way using this framework of personality types can be used in both ways. Now, is the DISC model the best personality tool? No, it is not nuanced enough. See, the DISC model is based on personality research, more precisely on the subfield of behavioral psychology. This area focuses on understanding, explaining and predicting human behavior. 
Behavioral psychology is more the surface layer approach to psychology, if you ask me. It's more the symptoms, so to speak, that we observe and not necessarily the causes. It's the branches of a tree, not the roots of it. Now, don't get me wrong, it doesn't make any of it less valuable. You could even make a very strong case that it's the most practical branch of psychology in terms of changing your life. The difficulty is, since we are speaking of the human mind, the more towards the roots you go, the less scientifically sound it usually gets. That's why depth psychologists like Freud and Jung get such a backlash, although they do provide a tremendous, a tremendous cognitive framework for the betterment of my personal life. I absolutely love Carl Jung's work and I want to learn more and more about it. Also, disk tests are used by numerous companies to get to know their employees better. This is especially true for recruiting, but also with regard to long-term employee retention. But friends, the Big Five personality test is by far the most scientifically validated and reliable psychological model to measure personality. However, it's not as easy to get a grip over and observe as the disc profiles that are color-coded now. That's why I chose to bring this to you. Friends, understanding what motivates you and appreciating the perspectives of others are crucial ingredients for career and success in life. When you can gather the right team around you, not only will you become more effective, but you're able to provide others fundamental needs. In the next video, which will be way shorter, we discuss the Blues personality type.